I'm gonna rent a car for the first time and drive out of Dublin. I'm from the United States, so we're gonna be driving on the other side of the road and the other side of the car. To be totally honest, I'm really nervous about this. Driving around Dublin is not ideal. As you can see, we're barely moving at all. We've actually really just been sitting in traffic the whole time, uh, but I'm surprised at how easy it is to, to switch. It's really confusing to navigate the one-way streets. Usually we have a double yellow, which shows you the two different directions. Here, they're white dotted lines. So when you're on a two-way street, it's a little bit tough to tell whether or not you're going the right way. Sure. Okay, here we come on a roundabout. You need to look to the right, make sure nobody's coming. And as you're going, look over your left shoulder because there are often two lanes. So if there's a two lane roundabout, then you need to consider how far around the roundabout you need to go. So if you're not going far around the roundabout, you need to be in the outside lane. So if it's the first or second exit, stay in the outside lane, because if you're on the inside lane, then if you need to exit, then there might be somebody coming around at the same point as you. So you need to be able to see them, and if they're right there, you're not gonna be able to exit, so you have to go around again. Now, if there's not somebody there, then you can easily get off the roundabout, but it's always uh, important to just position yourself going into the roundabout based on how far around you need to go. You don't need an international driver's license in Ireland. Your, your American driver's license will work. We're out on the open highway and it's pretty nice. I think I'm getting used to the uh, driving on the other side of the car. You will notice that roads are named by the letters M, N, and R, and that basically decides how fast and um, how windy the road is gonna be. So M stands for motorway. It's basically like a freeway in the States. And N is, is more like a, a, a freeway, but just a smaller version of it. And you can still go pretty fast. We're going around 100 kilometers now. Uh, and then R stands for a road that they call secondary or tertiary. So those are the roads that are going to be scenic but very windy. So when you're planning your route for your trip and you want to get somewhere kind of fast, make sure you go on the M and N routes. And uh, if you're looking for a scenic drive, look for those R roads. As Matt was mentioning, there's one divider in the middle that's white. So they don't have yellow to, to differentiate if it's a one or two way street. So you basically have to look for arrows that will be placed on the road or, or um, just look to see what way cars are going to figure out which lane you should be in. Now you see it turned to a double white, meaning you can't cross the road, um, but they do have passing lanes where it's very similar in the United States where it'll be dotted like you see here, where you can go and pass cars in front of you on these um, two lane roads. How do you like driving for the first time? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> After driving for a couple of days is I have the right mirror going down the right side of the car uh, so that I can see how close I am to the center line and I'm pretty much using it exclusively for that. I can of course see behind me as far as I need, but the main mirror that I'm using to see behind me is the center mirror. So the center mirror is just right there for, for what's right behind me. Now the left mirror is angled a little bit more down so that I can see the side of the car and how close I am to the left side. Because there's lots of times where there's a car coming and it's really narrow and they're maybe far over in their lane, like right now. And, and uh, I need to be able to get over to the left without hitting a wall or without going into the brush. So that's one thing that's been helping me that you might want to play around with. It's one of the common mistakes people make here is putting the wrong type of fuel into their car. The pumps are opposite. The diesel here is the black and the, the petrol or gasoline, which there's gasoline in our country, it's called petrol here, is a green pump. So a lot of people will end up putting petrol into a diesel car or, or diesel into a gasoline car and it will mess it up and then you have to pay for a, a truck to come and pump it out of the gas tank. It might be suggested that you rent a navigation system for a hundred euro extra, but we've actually found Google Maps to be extremely reliable. If you have an international phone plan, you'll be able to get 3G almost everywhere you go. Also, most coffee shops, bars, restaurants, and hotels all offer free Wi-Fi, so you should be able to plug in anywhere you stop and get uh, maps if your 3G happens to not be working at that time. I haven't seen one single traffic policeman while I've been here. 
They don't seem to be enforcing rules of the road. Not to say that there aren't any traffic laws, but I haven't seen anybody being pulled over for speeding. I haven't even seen policemen out patrolling anywhere in this entire country. There are some that are in the city, but they don't seem to care much about the traffic rules. Even parking and cars that are illegally parked, I've been told by locals, usually get away with it and there's never a problem. So that's not really a big thing to worry about. After two weeks of driving in Ireland, I would conclude that it's definitely not a problem for Americans to come to Ireland and drive. This video might help you ease some of your tensions. It's not been that hard, and it only took a day or two to really get used to it. After that, it was smooth sailing, and it was a really nice way to get around.